Hi everyone, my name is Sarah Guthels and I lead DevRel here at Sentry. This is the next video in the Debugging Your Next.js Projects with Sentry. In our last video, we installed Sentry into our project and we got it up and running and made sure that we could see an error happening live in the Sentry dashboard. Before we go any further, I did want to talk a little bit about source maps. One thing that's really useful about using the Next.js CLI wizard that we used in the last video is it configures your source maps automatically but not every single one of our SDK installations does that automatically for you. So I did wanna walk through how to do that if you didn't use the wizard or if you're using Sentry with a different framework that doesn't have the wizard that does that automatically for you. First of all, you can head over to our source maps documentation and it can show you the benefits of using source maps with Sentry. You might recall that over here in our issue for the error that we got, we saw this exact line of code that triggered the error. We can see that it is specifically in the flashcards hook, and it is when we are trying to do an update to a flashcard. And that would allow us to determine where the error might be originating from. However, when we were running this in the browser and just using the JavaScript console, we didn't get that information. We were told something about a handle update and an update, but it didn't tell us where it was. It gave us this obfuscated file name and didn't really give us a proper line within the file to go look for it. If you don't have source maps set up with Sentry, then that's the same kind of information that you would get within Sentry. And I wanna show that off to you. To do that, let's go to our project dashboard. Uh, this is our debugging Next.js project that we created for the purposes of this video series. I'm going to open up the settings for this specific project, and I'm going to click over here at source maps over in the menu bar on the left hand side. You can see here that we do have source maps set up with our project and you know what, I'm just going to go ahead and delete them all. So now we have no artifacts for this bundle in particular. Let's go ahead and try to trigger that uh, error again and see what the difference is in the information that we get with and without source maps. So I'm just going to reload this page to what it was originally, and I'm going to try to delete the question name again and update without having any question at all. We can see, see that we still get that spinning, and if we open up that JavaScript console within the browser, we got that error again. Same error in update and handle update. So now in our issues for this project, you can see that we have two unique errors. You might recall that I mentioned that when this issue is created, we can see the number of events that triggered this issue and the number of users that triggered this issue over here in the top right hand side. The reason why we don't get a second event for this specific issue and instead we get a an entirely new issue that is created is because the information that we're getting on this issue is different than the previous issue. So they aren't the same from Sentry's perspective. So that's something to watch out for in general is if you change the amount of information or access that Sentry has, for example, having access to source maps or not having access, access to source maps, that may result in two unique issues being created on the Sentry side. We can see down here with the stack trace that the information we're getting is significantly less than the, than the information that we got when we had source maps. We're essentially getting the same information that we got in the JavaScript console in the browser. So let's go ahead and get source maps linked back up with this Sentry project so that we can make sure that we get that more detailed information about where in our actual code this error is being thrown. The good news is, is just like with our Next.js wizard, we actually have a wizard that helps you upload source maps. So we can just copy this and go back into our terminal. We're gonna go ahead and quit out and paste that wizard in and get going. So we can see here that the wizard is going to create new files so that we can upload our source maps. So we'll go ahead and click on yes. We are using Sentry SAS. As another reminder, Sentry is open source, so you can run it for free, self-hosted if you'd like, but we're using the SaaS application this time. And we do already have a Sentry account that the wizard will need to connect to, so we'll say yes. As before, it opens up a browser window, connects to our logged in Sentry account, and connects that down to the wizard. Then we're going to choose the debugging Next.js projects project on Sentry. And we are using Next.js as our framework, uh, but you can 
see that we have additional frameworks available through this wizard, including other, which can just be kind of anything. Then we're invited to run the Sentry wizard for Next.js. This is the one that we have already run, so you don't need to run it this time. We ran it, deleted source maps, then ran the source maps only wizard. Um, and so that's why it's asking us, because if you are just running the source maps one, maybe you didn't know that you could run the one to install all of Sentry for Next.js. And that's everything we need to do. So again, it's a little repetitive because we did use the wizard the first time. Uh, you wouldn't normally have to do that, but um, this did help out. But if for some reason you used an old version of the Next.js SDK and you didn't have source maps set up yet, I wanted to kind of show you that that wizard is fairly simple to run. Now let's go ahead and build so that we can trigger those source maps being uploaded to Sentry. Once that is built, we can head over to the project settings for our debugging Next.js projects. And we can open up source maps and see that our artifact bundles have been uploaded again. We can also see that we have a new release bundle and these are the artifacts that'll be associated with it. So I'm gonna go ahead and rerun our project with PNPM start. And I do wanna to test to make sure that that second time that we trigger this error will pop up in the original issue um, so that we can see that this error is happening to more and more people or to one person more and more times. So we'll go ahead and refresh our page. We will delete that question again and attempt to update. We'll see the error over here in the JavaScript console still with that same limited information. And if we head back over to Sentry, go into our issues, we should see that we've got one new issue happening 12 seconds ago um, with an issue that happened 23 minutes ago. So we've got two events here for one user and if we click into it, we can see that this is the time that it happened just now. And if we go to the previous event, this is the one that happened about 23 minutes ago. And we have the same information here. So the difference between having Sentry have access to your source maps and not is that with access to your source maps, you get a more detailed stack trace. Um, you can even open this line up in GitHub and it'll automatically bring you to that GitHub file in your GitHub repository. And you can start making modifications or comments or ask questions right then and there.